Today we have this rather silly anti-cyclist post up for discussion, which could assist in getting Claire convicted if she were ever prosecuted for running into a cyclist, and in this video I'm going to explain why. So let's take a look at this post on X, formerly Twitter as people feel obliged to say. It says, I live in the Lake District where we have loads of cyclists, as it's written, who know the roads and don't ride two or three abreast and signal when you can pass. In reverse order, the last bit of that's perfectly fine, signal when you can pass. Not that I really encourage cyclists to do that, because you're not really supposed to signal other road users as to what they are supposed to do. But in the reality of things, if a cyclist were to say, come along, it's safe to pass, and then the vehicle passes, everything goes off without an issue. That's not really the problem. But the first bit where it says they don't ride two or three abreast suggests that Claire thinks that this is somehow wrong. Now, on some occasions, it's probably better that cyclists don't ride two or three abreast on a road, but in some cases, it's certainly better that they do, because it will force the vehicle to slow down and overtake with the proper space required, as opposed to squeezing past the cyclist on a narrow bend of sorts, which we all know some drivers do. But even that is not really the main problem of this post, although it does have its own problems in that first half of the post. The real problem, which could really go against Claire in the right circumstances, is the second half of this, where it says, tourists, on the other hand, we should be able to run into them. No road sense or consideration. Entitled and rude. Now this suggests, obviously, that some tourists, tourist cyclists, I presume, are somehow entitled, somehow rude, somehow have no road sense, and somehow have no consideration. All of which might be true. But that aside, the middle bit of that, which says we should be able to run into them, would amount to some sort of confession if Claire were ever prosecuted for, let's say, running into a cyclist, as this post suggests she might do. Or she might feel that she's entitled to do so. Let's look at why that is such a problem. Because a confession, let's say that Claire were prosecuted for running into a cyclist, as this post suggests that she feels she should be able to do. A confession is any statement which is wholly or partly adverse to the person who made it, whether to a person in authority or not. So you don't have to be sitting in a police station saying to the police officer, or investigating officer saying, yes, fair cop, it was me, I intended to do it, I've always wanted to do that, or something along those lines. It doesn't have to be that. It can be any statement, whether or not to a person in authority, and it can be before the offence happens. Because let's take the situation there, where Claire is now prosecuted for having run into a cyclist and prosecuted for careless or dangerous driving, because the cyclist might have been seriously injured. A good prosecutor would possibly dig up this post and put it in as evidence, as some sort of confession evidence to say, you've always felt that you should be able to run into cyclists. That's right, isn't it? Now, of course, there will be counter arguments, but unless this were obtained by oppression, which is obviously not, no one is sitting there forcing her to write this t post, I nearly called it a tweet then, post, um, so far as I'm aware, and it's not likely to be in any other way unfair. The only possible argument I can see against this is that it might well be more prejudicial as to probative. In other words, that means probative being the usefulness of the evidence and prejudicial mean the unfairness that it might have on the overall proceedings. So a court has a general discretion to exclude evidence where it is more prejudicial than probative, i.e. it's going to be more harmful to the fairness of the case than it is useful to the case as a piece of evidence. I can't really see that being uh, applicable here, and this is likely to go in as evidence against Claire if Claire were ever to be prosecuted for running into or running over a cyclist. So just let this be a lesson that when you post something like this on social media, it is public, it is in the public domain, there is nothing to suggest that this is going to be excluded from any prospective or possible proceedings against Claire if Claire were ever to run into a cyclist. Now, this would obviously stand Claire aside from anybody else that perhaps accidentally runs into a cyclist. A good prosecutor might well say that Claire intended to do this because, as this post suggests, Claire feels, according to her own post, we should be able to run into cyclists, especially those who are tourists. 
So just be careful what you post on social media because it could come back to bite you as some form of confession evidence. And for those that are arguing that this is just a joke and so on, well, that might be. But if arguments were made as to it being more prejudicial than probative, the judge is likely to say, well, defense counsel, you can make your representations to the jury. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you do have thoughts like this, you are probably better to keep them to yourself. But for the rest of us, it's probably better that people like Claire do make these statements online so that if ever they do run into a cyclist and they are prosecuted, it's more likely they'll be convicted. Because if that's the way that they really think about these things, then really they should be convicted if and whenever they are prosecuted for such offences. If you found that useful, please do subscribe to see more of my videos in your feed. Happy New Year to you all, and as always, thank you for watching.